If you're the number one, there's only one number one. There's not 10 billion number ones. But the reality is that there's millions of kids, there's millions of children that give their mothers a car that says, Mom, you're the greatest. And it says, Mom, you're number one, and they're absolutely sincere in what they're saying. How can that be? How can everyone have the greatest? You know, the, the reality of moms and the measure of moms, I don't know how you measure a mom's quote-unquote greatness other than what they do behind closed doors. I mean, the measure of mom truly comes with what's done anonymously. I mean, the kids, they begin to recognize, probably the older they get, not when they're young, but when they get older, all the sacrifices mom gave for them. The things that she set aside. The, the TV shows that she watched, the songs that she learned, the dreams that she put on hold, the times that she cleaned up after you when you didn't want to clean up after yourself. You know, the measure of a mom truly is really through anonymity. Just yesterday, I was talking to my wife, she was a barber. She was a, uh, a dishwasher. She was a cleaner upper. That's a word. I want to say maybe because I get myself a big truck. It's not what she was. She was a chef. She did all these things, and, and, it, and it didn't matter because she was just doing the role that she was given called mother. And again, I want to press into the reality because some of us dads were sitting back and we're saying, sweet, he's speaking about moms today. I don't have to listen. Or we're younger and we say, we don't have kids yet, so we don't have to listen. Or we haven't had kids, so we don't have to go. This sermon is for all of us on this day. I believe that we're all spiritual parents. We all have the opportunity to help people grow in Christ. And so as we press into the message today, I don't want you to pull out because you don't fit the role of mom. I want you to engage in what we're speaking to see what God might speak to you. And I talked about anonymity in being a mother, but the reality is the, the sermon today is based on a woman who is anonymous in Scripture. It's a woman, and we don't even know her name. She's just an anonymous mom in Scripture. I'm going to pray. God, I thank you this morning that we can look at your word. And I thank you, God, for what you've accomplished already in this place. And I thank you for what you desire to continue to accomplish in this place. And I pray for each of us in this room, God, that our hearts and minds would be yielded unto you. You would help us to focus and press into your word today and hear from your Holy Spirit what you need us to hear. God, I pray for myself as a pastor. I ask that my thoughts would be yielded to you and nothing but your very will will be accomplished in these next few moments. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk about an anonymous mother. And we're going to read this portion of Scripture in Matthew. And we're going to read it in Mark. Because I think they both bring compelling aspects to this story. The anonymous mother comes about, this is in Mark chapter 15. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came in crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Says the woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. And he replies, Is it not right to take a children's bread and toss it to the dogs? Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. I'm telling you, this is a, a hard portion of Scripture sometimes when you read it. I mean, there are some really weird moments in this that you're wondering, like, where is this Jesus that I, I, I understand? And I want to read it again now in, in the book of Mark. This is in Mark chapter 7. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. 
he entered the house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he couldn't keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was Greek. She was born in Syria and Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. That was just to make sure you were following. And now it's not going to work. I'll click it again. And now try it. You click it. <laughs> First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your dog. She went home and found a child lying on the bed and the demon gone. I want to press into this anonymous mother. I want to press into the story of, of this Woman, who we only know her nationality. We don't know her name. I mean, seriously, I'll give a story in the Bible put my name in there. I mean, come on. Seriously. I mean, I had a problem with all this. I don't even need my name in the book now. I'm sorry. That's dad speaking. Moms are anonymous. They do things anonymous. What's going on in this story? What's happening as we look at this, this story in Scripture? It says in, 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 in the book of, of Matthew, in the book of Mark, Jesus went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. We know what that region is. So the reality is, Jesus, he went to the region which was a Gentile region, which may not mean that much right now in what we're saying, but at that time, it was no fact. Jesus' ministry was where? To the Jews. When Jesus came, his primary ministry was to the Jews. So for some reason, Jesus was leaving where he was supposed to be doing ministry. Why would Jesus leave the region of the Jews and go to the region of the Gentiles? He said he went to a house and he didn't want anyone to know it. Obviously, Jesus is going for retreat. Jesus wants to get away. I mean, what have we seen? He's done some great miracles. He's done some incredible things. The crowd's been following. He's been entertaining the 5,000. He, his, his cousin died. I mean, he's got all these things on his plate. And Jesus says, I'm just going to retreat to the region of the Gentiles. Don't let anyone know I'm here. And while he's there, this anonymous woman, how does Scripture describe her? What do we know about her? She has a daughter. So her daughter's got a problem, right? What else do we know about this woman? She's what? Yeah. She's a Greek. She has faith. We know that, but we also know where she's from. Scripture says in Matthew she's a Canaanite. In, in Mark it says she's from Syria and Phoenicia. So she is a Gentile. But she has a problem. What is her problem? Stand the mom. Stand stand in the way of a mom and her kids' problems, right? Her daughter had a problem. And she had heard stories of this Jesus, this rabbi. And she had heard that he was the one who would solve the problem. So what did she do? She went back. So because she knew where the answer was, this mother with no name taught us, taught us a, a pretty easy lesson. She went where she wanted. Is it dead? No matter what. She knew where to go no matter what. What were the limitations that came upon her? Limitation number one was she was the wrong gender. In that time, there were, there were rabbis that said it was the worst three for everyone, folks. So if they were voting, it was three to one. Women couldn't just go talk to men. That wasn't okay. They couldn't just go talk to you. That wasn't acceptable. So, so she knew where the answer was, but the first issue she was facing was, hey, I'm the wrong gender. What else did she have? Not only was she a woman, but she was a Gentile woman. So not only was she the wrong gender, but she was the wrong nationality. I mean, what did Jesus say? 
I can't do for who? She was the wrong generation. She was the wrong nationality. And she came at the wrong time. Jesus was not a minister, though. He was in relaxed mode. If I come to my house and ask me to preach, I'm not in preaching mode. I'm in pastor mode. I'm going to have a relaxed mode. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus was outside the ministry. This was the wrong time. So she had these three strikes against her. Wrong gender, wrong nationality, and wrong time. And what did she do? She kept She kept living. She didn't care if, if these were the obstacles that were in front of her. She didn't care if she had these three strikes against her. She said, my daughter has a problem, and I know who can solve it. It doesn't matter that I'm not supposed to speak to him. It doesn't matter that I'm not supposed to, 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 to talk to him because I'm a Gentile and he's a Jew. It doesn't matter that I came at the wrong time. I read this. I need to find it in my notes somewhere. There was a Jewish writer that said, there were rabbis who prayed every day. I thank thee God that I was not born a Gentile, a dog, or a woman. So she's called a dog. She's a Gentile and she's a woman. Everybody in the world is telling her that's not the, that's not gonna happen. You know, say her husband's probably like, you're crazy, woman. That man's not gonna talk to you. We don't see him in the story. Where is he at? She's got all these things against her, but what compels her? A need that she knows a solution to. And nothing's going to stand in the way of what she needs to do. Yes, because she knew where to go no matter what, and she was persistent. But the silence, the first time she cried out to Jesus, what response did she get? Man, church. We might even learn a lesson from an anonymous brother. To pers persevere through the silence. We cry out to God and we don't hear anything. And we start to say, He's not listening. We start to question the solution to the problem that we're seeking Him for and we stop asking. Hey, He was silent this time. That must be no. That must mean He's not worried about it. This woman, I mean, can you imagine this moment? I mean, I just, I just picture this. Jesus is at this house. This woman is there, and she cries out to him for him to touch her daughter, and he just... Sorry. I'm starting to think about all the problems. I'm the wrong gender. I'm the wrong nationality. This is the wrong time. I better, I better come back later. I better get my husband to come back and make this appeal for me. But she persevered through the challenges. Not only was, was there silence, but then there were obstacles. Did you see the obstacles? Because now Jesus is silent, and, and what happens? His disciples start to get a little worked out. Now, I don't know how this happens. This is one of those profound mysteries in Scripture. How does that woman get to the 12 disciples to get back to Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Like, does she dress up as something else? I mean, does she go incognito to get beyond the disciples? Because they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, let's just send her away. There's the followers of Christ that are with him. They're, they're each probably at some point saying, hey, be quiet, Kathy. Just go. Okay. The master thought. You're a woman. Look in the mirror. I've got to pull my mirror out. Pull my iPhone out. Do a selfie with me. Say, look, look at the difference. I'm a Jew. You're a Gentile. You're a woman. I'm a man. You're a dog. I'm not. I mean, that's, what, that's what's going to happen. The, the disciples began to take the side that they felt of the master and said, let's just get this woman out of here. But she knew what the answer was. She knew what her daughter's problem was. And she was going to get the result no matter what. She wasn't going to stop until she received what was hers.
What kind of persistence is that? I mean, because what was hers? The crumbs? Come on. If I come to your table and give you the crumbs, I'm going to say something I can't while I'm preaching.
Ya. Bisa. This is wrong time. I mean, as a youth pastor, I don't know how many times I've heard that. Pastor, I'm going to get my life right when I get older. It's not the right time right now. i got to live a little bit. No, the time for you to get right was yesterday. Because the promise that is given can be fulfilled today. There's crumbs for you today at the master's table that he wants you to partake of. It's the perfect time for you to eat some crumbs. It's the perfect time for your life to get crummy. Don't quote that one on Facebook. I want that to be the, the word from Pastor today. <laughs> Pastor said, oh, life's a crummy. I'll tell you what, I wish I had a crummy life. No, I wish I had a crummy life. But I recognize how powerful the promise work. But I recognize the promise that was in those crumbs. And I wasn't going to be content until I am. That's this woman. Her daughter needs the grace of God. And she said, I know where it's at. And I know those crumbs. And if I can just have them. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Or 16, sorry. It says in the NIV, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence. It's this woman. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. In the Amplified, it says, let us fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. This is what I see that woman doing. She's fearless, she's confident, and she's bold. I mean, she's taking on the 12 to get to Jesus. The throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners that we may receive mercy for our own failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. In the message. I like this translation in this verse. Now that we know what we have, that woman knew who she was going to. She was going to Jesus. Now that we know we have Jesus, this great high priest, with ready access to God. Let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing and experienced it all. All but the sin. So let's walk right up to him. Huh? Let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy and accept the help. I want to tell you this morning, you guys can come forward, because this is about where I'm going to end, that, that God has crumbs for you. And I don't know what situation mothers maybe are happening in your children's lives, or, or fathers in your, in your friends' lives, or, or church in the church body's life, but I know that there's some crumbs at the master's table. And I don't want to let it slip through my fingers. I don't want to make an excuse for why God won't answer my prayer today. But I want to boldly, boldly, fearlessly, confidently approach you. Knowing I'm not defined by everything the world says would separate me from his promise. Knowing I'm not defined by my gender, my nationality, or what time it is. Knowing that I'm defined because he made me a child of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. I quoted 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. It says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we might be called children of God. And that is who we are. That is who I am. I'm a child of God. So because I'm a child of God, I have His favor. You know, this morning, God already addressed the baggage. He conditioned us for this moment. He said that which hinders, that which keeps you, get rid of it. And I want to spend this morning, before we leave, taking time to approach his table. And I don't know what, 
what demon-possessed daughter, excuse my language, is in your life. But I'm guessing there's someone that the Holy Spirit of God can place on your heart that needs someone to go to bat for them. Someone to come to the master for them. Someone to go to the answer of their problems. And I will tell you, the problem is answered in Jesus Christ. It's not going to be answered anywhere else. Someone who's willing to say, I'm going to seek this with all my strength. So this morning, as they lead us in, in a chorus, as we, as we can bring a lead here, I just I'll open the altars and you can, you can pray where you're at, but I, I long that we would be intercessors, that we would stand in the gap for those that are in our lives. Just like the church, like hands on pastor. Why? Well, believing the promise of God to be accomplished in his life. We need to cry out for those that are around us. Father, I come to you this morning. And God, I thank you for the lesson from this anonymous mother. God, we know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We know that you come, come that we might have life and, and have it to the full. And that promise is not just for us, but for others. And because we know your promise, God, I pray for your crumbs this day. God, that we receive what is ours through Jesus Christ. Every promise, every word, everything that is ours through Jesus Christ. You said even greater things than these will they do in my name. God, I pray for your presence in us. I pray for your power through us, Lord, as, as, as we as the body of Christ begin to have names and faces placed on our hearts. I pray we could boldly come before the throne of God. Fearlessly. Confidently. Seeking the one who answers in Jesus' name. God, all across this room, you heard the prayers of your children. God, you've heard the requests for your crumbs. And God, I pray that in each situation that was prayed for, the power, the grace, the answer to prayer that is, that is needed in those situations. God, I pray we would persistently seek you, no matter what. We would continue to ask, even when there's silence, even when others are trying to quiet us, even when we don't know whether the answer is here or not, Lord, that we would persistently seek you. Until we receive what is ours. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his, may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. And may you get some crumbs, amen? I just heard a crummy testimony. I want to hear more crummy testimonies. That's what I want to hear is crummy testimonies. Amen? Amen. Be blessed.